The purpose of this video is to illustrate how to use the Zeiss KF2 student microscope. Using a microscope correctly is a skill that you need to develop, not only for the present biology course, but also for the future. Most of you will go on to take courses such as microbiology and anatomy and physiology, where facility with microscopes is assumed. And certainly with respect to microbiology, you cannot hope to succeed in the course unless correct microscope technique is second nature. Ultimately, you can only develop the necessary skill with microscopes through repeated exposure and practice, but this video will help you to begin on the right foot. Let's begin by looking at the parts of the microscope and their functions. The base of the microscope is broad and heavy in order to provide stability. This, together with a sturdy table, reduces vibrations and facilitates a clear view of tiny objects. The illuminator is located in the base. This is a light source together with lenses to direct the light up to the condenser underneath the stage. The light adjustment knob is located on the right side of the base. This turns the light on and off as well as changing the intensity. You will need to adjust light intensity whenever you move to a different objective lens and to compensate for specimens of differing densities. The arm is attached to the base, and besides being where you grasp the microscope when carrying it, the arm holds the two major subassemblies of the microscope. The stage, where specimens are placed for viewing, and the lens assembly. Let's examine these two subassemblies in greater detail. In this view, you can observe most of the parts that you will manipulate when looking at specimens on the microscope slides. Here are the objective lenses, which allow viewing at different magnifications. This is the stage, with its slide holder. These knobs allow you to move the slide with great precision. And here are the focusing knobs. Finally, on the base is the light adjustment knob. In this view, you can see how the stage is attached to the arm. On this microscope, focusing is accomplished by moving the stage up and down. Some microscopes have a fixed stage and the lens assembly moves up and down, but the arrangement you see here is more common on student microscopes. Focusing is accomplished by two knobs which are located on the arm. The outermost knurled ring is the coarse focusing knob. Turning this knob will move the stage up or down rather rapidly, which is appropriate when using the scanning or low power objectives. The smaller knurled ring is the fine focusing knob. Turning this will move the stage in small increments. In this way, you can tweak the focus in small amounts until the object of interest is at its clearest. This is the only knob that you should use when viewing objects with the high power or oil immersion objectives. These lenses are almost in contact with the slide and moving the stage upward too rapidly might easily break the glass. Now let's look at the stage in more detail. In older microscopes, the stage is simply a flat surface on which to place the slide. On most modern microscopes, including ours, the stage is a fairly complex mechanical device. This silvery gray contraption on top of the stage is the slide holder. This is attached to a ratcheted bar that allows the slide to be moved from side to side. The entire top surface of the stage can be moved toward or away from the arm. Movement on either axis is accomplished by turning the mechanical stage knobs that are located under the right hand side of the stage just above the light adjustment knob. There are even scales for the X and Y axes that can be used to relocate objects on a microscope slide. To begin viewing a specimen, use the lever to retract the movable arm on the slide holder. Place the slide on the flat surface of the stage and release the lever. The arm will hold the slide firmly in place. 
A common mistake, sometimes made by students who are just learning to use the microscope, is to place the slide on top of the slide holder right about here. However, when placed here, the slide is apt to move around and even pop out of the slide holder altogether. Be sure to put the slide on the flat surface of the stage. Once the slide is in the slide holder, use the mechanical stage knobs to move the slide into position over the condenser and to move the slide around when searching for objects. Looking beneath the microscope stage, we find the condenser. This spreads or narrows the light beam to provide even illumination to the specimen on the microscope slide. Since different objective lenses vary in their field of view, the condenser must be adjusted when changing magnification. Within the condenser, there is an adjustable aperture or diaphragm. This is used primarily to alter the depth of field. A smaller aperture produces greater depth of field, and a wider aperture will result in a shallow depth of field. You must learn to exploit this feature of optics to enhance your view of items of interest. There is a diaphragm lever attached to the condenser for changing the size of the aperture. Here is a view looking up at the condenser from below. There are two openings to allow light to pass through. This one produces a wider beam of light and is used with the scanning and low power objectives. This one results in a narrower but more intense beam of light that is needed when using the high power and oil immersion lenses. This is the diaphragm lever. Moving it side to side opens and closes the aperture to change depth of field. You can also use this lever to change from one condenser opening to the other by pushing it all the way to the left or to the right. Now let's look at the lens assembly on the microscope. This includes the objective lenses, the tube containing lenses and mirrors to redirect the light, and the ocular lenses in the two eyepieces. The KF2 is a binocular microscope with two eyepieces. You can adjust the width of the eyepieces by grasping the binocular tubes and twisting them up or down, similar to the procedure with binoculars. Notice the different appearances of the two eyepieces. The one on the left is fixed focus, but the one on the right has a diopter adjustment ring. The normal procedure with this microscope is to obtain the best possible focus with the left eye using the coarse focusing knob, then rotate the diopter ring on the right eyepiece until the focus is correct in both eyes. This procedure will provide a clearer view of the objects with less strain on your eyes. Now let's turn our attention to the objective lenses. They are attached to a turret or nose piece that can be rotated by grasping the knurled ring and twisting. When changing lenses, be sure to continue turning until the objective clicks into place. There are four objective lenses on our microscope. Each has its uses and cautions that you should be aware of. You should always begin with the scanning objective, the one with the red band. This lens has the lowest magnification and therefore the widest field of view and greatest depth of field. This makes it ideal for searching around on the slide to locate the object of interest. Magnification with this lens is 5x, as you can see on the barrel. The ocular lens magnifies the image 10 times for a total magnification of 50x, or 50 times. This means that objects will appear 50 times larger than they actually are. Once you have located your object, Use the mechanical stage knobs to move it to the exact center of your field of view and make sure that it is in perfect focus before turning the next objective into place. The next lens to use is the low power objective, the one with the yellow band. This lens magnifies objects 10 times. 
The ocular lens magnifies the image 10 times for a total magnification of 100x. When viewing larger objects, this may be sufficient magnification to get a clear view. If greater magnification is required, it is especially important for you to center the object and achieve the best possible focus before moving on to the high power objective, which has a blue band. This lens has such a narrow field of view and shallow depth of field that you will not be able to locate the object unless it was perfectly centered and focused before turning this lens into place. You will also need to change the condenser to provide more intense light. You do this with the diaphragm lever as described previously. This lens magnifies objects 40 times. The ocular magnifies the image 10 times. When using this objective, objects will appear 400 times larger than they really are. One note of caution. Some students become concerned when turning the high power objective into place because it looks like it might strike the slide and possibly break it. These students make the mistake of lowering the stage before turning the lens into place. This will actually increase the chances of damaging the slide because it is now necessary to move the stage upwards with the course focusing knob. So, when turning the high power objective into place, rest assured that the lens will not strike the slide if you have focused correctly with the low power objective. The last and most powerful objective lens is the oil immersion lens. This objective magnifies objects 100 times. The ocular magnifies the image 10 times for a total magnification of 1000x. We will only use this lens to observe bacteria. As the name suggests, you must put a drop of oil onto the slide before rotating this lens into place, and the tip will indeed dip into the oil. After focusing and centering the bacteria using the high power objective, you should rotate it out of the way and place a drop of immersion oil onto the slide. Then complete the rotation until the oil immersion lens is in place. You will probably have to open up the aperture using the diaphragm lever in order to have enough light to see the bacteria clearly. Be careful not to dip the high power objective into the oil and remember to clean the oil off of the oil immersion lens when you are done. Well, there you have it. A brief rundown of the important parts of the microscope and some basic steps to follow. Now, let's quickly review the procedures in a real movie. Move the arm on the slide holder aside. Push the slide into place, then release the arm. This will hold the slide firmly. Center the specimen on the slide over the condenser window using the mechanical stage knobs on the lower right hand side of the stage. Establish your initial focus using the scanning objective and the coarse focusing knob. If this is the first time you've used the microscope, you may have to raise the stage a considerable amount. If you haven't already done so, adjust the width of the oculars to fit your eyes. Establish your focus with the left eye, then adjust focus for your right eye using the diopter ring on the right ocular. Once you have centered and focused the object on scanning, you'll probably want to move on to the low power objective. You'll need to focus for the low power objective and probably recenter it as well. Once you have centered and focused the object perfectly with the low power objective, you can move on to the high power objective. Notice how close this is to the slide. You must only focus with the high power objective using the fine focusing knob so that it does not break the slide. The oil immersion lens requires special procedures. Once you have focused and centered with the high power objective, 
and adjusted the light. Then rotate the high power objective out of the way and place a drop of oil in the center of the slide. Rotate the oil immersion lens into place. Now you're ready to observe very small objects such as bacteria. Cleanup requires special procedures. Once you're finished, lower the stage so that the lenses are well out of the oil. Rotate the lens toward you and clean the end with a swab soaked in lens cleaning fluid. Dry the lens with the opposite end of the swab. Now you're ready to look at the next slide or to put the microscope away. Well there you have it. Now it's time for you to start practicing what you've been watching.